Hello and welcome to Learn A-Level Biology for free with Miss Estrick. In this video, I'm going to go through how to write an essay for A-Level Biology and pick out some of the key pointers in the mark scheme as well as finishing off by doing a example plan for you. So first of all, just to point out, I'm going to base this on the AQA essay, which you'll have on paper three, which is from the post 2015 specification. So it's a 25 mark essay at the back of the paper three. And the whole point is the exam boards have to come up with a way to try and assess as broad a range of your knowledge from the specification as possible, but also your depth of understanding. And they were given two choices. They could either go for a multiple choice section or an essay. An AQA with the only exam board that opted for the essay all the others went for multiple choice questions. So it's going to be assessing your A-level knowledge, but also the key thing is your ability to apply your knowledge to that particular exam question. So, so far, here are the titles that have come up on this new specification. You are given a choice of two titles each year. 2017, we can see we had one on nitrogen containing substances and diffusion. 2018, the control of movement in cells, but also in the entire organism. The importance of interactions between cells, but also between different organisms. Last year, so it's now 2020, um, was the importance of DNA as an information carrying molecule and its use in gene technologies, and then the importance of bonds and bonding. So a few key things to pick out that you might spot from all of these titles. Number one, they all start with the importance of, and that is the application part. So you have to be able to say not only what one of the processes is, but you need to then apply your knowledge to say why that is important. And we'll go into more detail on that. The other thing to notice is quite a lot of the titles have two elements to them. So for example, the 2018 title, the control of movement in cells and in organisms. 2019, DNA is an information carrying molecule and in gene technologies. So whichever title you go for, do analyze the title before you start to make sure that your plan and therefore your essay fully addresses the whole title. So this here is the mark scheme, which is used for whichever title you use, and it's what we call a best fit model. And what that means is your essay, you don't get marks per tick or per point that you write. Instead, the examiner has to read your entire essay and then decide which one of these boxes best matches the quality of your essay. So they will read through your essay, maybe annotate as they go, um, and then they have to decide which box does your answer best fit into. And then within that box, they need to decide, are you near the top, middle, or bottom? And that's how they decide your mark. So we'll go through it a section at a time so you get a better understanding. So I'm gonna go through the first parts very quickly because they're very, very low marks and it's unlikely you'd get there. So you're only gonna get zero if you write nothing relevant. One to five marks is described as unfocused, so you don't really address the theme. The theme is the title, that's the terminology they use. Um, and instead you just present some facts, usually descriptive, not well explained, and they might be incorrect. It's not A-level standard, lots of errors. So then we're gonna move on to six to 10 and 11 to 15. Six to 10 is described as unistructural, and that's because your essay may only talk about one particular topic or maybe two topics. So you're not showing your breadth of knowledge. The biology that is presented is superficial and poorly explained. And there might still be to be at six rather than 10, you might still have some significant errors or irrelevant topics. Now, superficial A-level is one of the issues that many, many students have when they start writing their essays. And what we mean by that is you don't explain in enough depth. So what I always say is when I'm marking an essay, re I read through and think, did that student know that information at GCSE? And if the answer is yes, 
then you are not writing at A-level standard. And diffusion is a good example of this. So often students might write a bit on diffusion in the alveoli and tell me about um, oxygen diffuses into the bloodstream from the alveoli because of the concentration gradient, and that's important for respiration. Now, all of that you knew at GCSE. It's no way near enough detail. It's poorly explained. So that would count as superficial A-level. And towards the end of the video, I'll go through how you could bump that up to make it much, much more detailed in A-level standard. 11 to 15 is the box that most students score in. And for the last couple of years, the average mark was around 13 out of 25 across the whole of the UK. And the multi-structural box is where the response mostly deals with suitable topics. So you have picked topics relevant to the title, but links are not made to the theme of the question. And this is the most common reason why people can't get above 15 marks. And what this means is you did not apply your knowledge. So if we think back to that diffusion example, you might have written excellent detail about diffusion and gas exchange in maybe fish in the countercurrent flow, all of which is A-level standard. But the title of all the essays is the importance of, and in this case, diffusion. So you would then have to go into really specific details about why it is so important that fish get oxygen in their red blood cells. And this is then when you'd write your second half of the paragraph, and that would be about respiration. But to be at A-level standard, you would have to talk about the exact role of oxygen in the biochemistry of respiration. And that's what they mean by links are not made. So unless you make a really detailed A-level explanation link as to why the concept you've just discussed is important, you're not getting above 15 marks. And that is the most common issue students have in their essays. Now, the biology is usually correct A-level, but it might lack some detail. It's usually clearly explained. You've got some good use of terminology. Um, to be at 11, you might have some significant errors or more than one irrelevant topic. So the top two boxes, which are the hardest to get into, 16 to 20, relational, response links several topics to the main theme of the question to form a series of interrelated points which are clearly explained. Now what that means, AQA have published some guidelines in 2019 to fully explain that sentence. Several topics they stated means at least four. So you can just write four paragraphs or four separate topics, um, and that is enough to get full marks on an essay. You can though, they do suggest it might be a good idea to write between four and six paragraphs, just to make sure you're covering your back in case one of the four you wrote wasn't particularly good. But you can get full marks with only four topics. Theme of the question means the title. Series of interrelated points, which are clearly explained. This is what they mean. Um, this refers to, did you link it to the importance of? So did you link it back to the title clearly? The biology has to be fundamentally correct. You can have some points which are detailed. Some might be less well-developed. That would put you in the middle range. Uh, you could still have one significant error and get 16 marks or one irrelevant topic. So the top box, 21 to 25, the response shows holistic approach to the question with a fully integrated answer, which makes clear links between several topics and the theme of the question. So by this, it means you need to have really picked your four or more than four, four to six topics. You have really clearly linked it and explained at A-level standard why each of those topics is essential in biology or in organisms, whatever it was in the um, title they stated. The biology is detailed and comprehensive. It uses appropriate terminology, well explained. So to get in this top box, everything you write has to be detailed and correct A-level biology with nothing irrelevant included that would get you 23 marks. To get 24 or 25, you have to achieve this top sentence in addition to everything else. 
So you also have to have evidence of reading beyond the specification. And what that means is a substantial amount of what you have written has to be information beyond the specification. So it has to be biology theory that is not taught in A-level. So for example, you might have done some extra research about the disease cholera. And when you were writing an essay on osmosis, you might have had a whole section on um, the impact that cholera has on osmosis. So it is very hard to achieve 23 or 25 marks because first of all, you have to have a perfect essay before. Secondly, you have to not only know all of your A-level content, you have to invest time to then know beyond that. So my general advice is, unless you're someone that has been getting A stars and very high marks the entire course, just aim for 23. Because if you start spending time reading beyond the specification, you might then actually jeopardise the quality of the rest of your essay and your um, theory understanding of the rest of the exam board. So that's the mark scheme. Let's have a look at some examples. So I'm picking out the importance of diffusion. And I'm going to show you how I would do a very detailed essay plan in one of the first lessons that I would do in school. And this would take most of the lesson. It's also an incredibly helpful revision tool. If you do lots of these types of essay plans in your revision for the A-levels, it's an amazing way to test your understanding and knowledge of the biology, as well as practicing a skill. So the first step is, I just say, pick four topics. You can do two extra boxes if you want to go for six. And you need to think of four topics that are relevant to the title, which in this case is diffusion. So I'm gonna go for gas exchange as one of mine. I'm also gonna go for the neurotransmitters diffusing across a synapse. Chemiosmosis, so where we have the facilitated diffusion of hydrogen ions. And then my last one is gonna be the diffusion of IAA, the plant growth factor. So I'm picking those four, but have a look at your revision guides, your textbooks or the specification, and you can pick your own four topics that are examples of diffusion, and that does include facilitated diffusion and osmosis, that's a special type of diffusion. Once you've done that, you then need to plan your AO1 and your AO2. What that means is AO1 is your knowledge, AO2 is your application of the knowledge. AO is assessment objective. So those are criteria that um, examiners use. Now, what this means is for every one of these four paragraphs that you write, you need to split approximately 50-50. So the first 50% of your paragraph would be on your knowledge of gas exchange. And to make sure I'm keeping it A-level standard, I'm only going to talk about gas exchange in fish because you do not learn that at GCSE. Gas exchange in the human lungs, the alveoli, you do learn at GCSE. So just don't talk about it. Go for the A-level example. And I'd focus on the countercurrent flow mechanism as a way to explain how diffusion can occur across the entire length of the lamellae, making sure I included in as many key terms as I could. So that would demonstrate my detailed A-level knowledge of gas exchange. The other half of the paragraph is where in the mark scheme it kept saying clear links are made to the theme. And what this means is you've clearly linked why what you've just said about gas exchange in fish is really, really important. So I'm going to link this to the importance being why oxygen, because that's what's diffusing in, is so important in fish. And this is going to be the same for whatever organism it is, because oxygen is the final electron acceptor in oxidated phosphorylation. And that's the last stage of respiration. And that is the level of detail you would need to go into. You can't just say oxygen is needed for respiration. Without respiration, you don't have ATP and cells die. That is really vague and it's GCSE standard. So you'd need to talk about that step. Then you'd need to say why oxidative phosphorylation is essential. So that means um, you get lots of ATP production, which is needed for 
metabolism in cells. So that would be the level of detail that you would have um, in your paragraphs. Now I've done a model of this for gas exchange. I'm not gonna do all of the others, but that would be what you would do in a very detailed plan, which might take you somewhere between 30 minutes if you are at the peak of your revision, or it might take up to an hour if you're still using the textbook to make sure you include enough detail. But it's a really good way to revise the theory. In the exam, it's essential that you write a plan. It won't be one as detailed as this because you are recommended to spend 40 to 45 minutes of the two hour exam on your essay. And about five minutes of that might be planning. It is really important to invest in those five minutes of planning though, because if you do, the structure and quality of the rest of your essay will be significantly improved and you would have had the chance to think clearly about four topics, AO1 and AO2, to make sure you are addressing the full mark scheme. You could even bullet point some A-level key terms that you want to include. One final thing as well, you can include pictures in an essay as long as you are referring to them within the written part. So that is it for essay writing. I hope you have found that helpful. There is going to be a workshop on this on the 17th of August on my Instagram account in 2020. Head over to my Instagram account to find out more details on that.